In this video, we're going to be talking about how to find the length of a line segment. We're going to be doing a couple different examples, but the formula that we're going to be using is this formula here that tells us the measure of a line segment or the length of a line segment. Now, remember to indicate a line segment, we always write the two endpoints. So, for example, if the endpoints are A and B, and then we write this line over it to indicate line segment. So when we're talking about the length of a line segment, we don't just say AB with the line over it because the length of a line segment and the line segment itself are not the same thing. So we have to say the measure M of the line segment, AB with the line over it, or just AB by itself, which indicates the length of the line segment, not the line segment itself. So either way, we can write the notation either way, but the length of a line segment is going to be equal to the absolute value of A minus B or the absolute value of B minus A. We're going to show that it doesn't matter which one we do, but for example, if we have this line here, this number line, and we're asked to find the length of the line segment AB, so from A to B, we can see that the coordinate point A is at negative 3 and that the point B is at negative 1. We can find the length of this line segment by taking A minus B on the number line or B minus A. Either way, we're going to get the same answer because we put it in absolute value brackets. So here's what that looks like. If we say the length of the line segment AB, so let's just say A to B like this, it's going to be equal to either the absolute value of negative 3 minus a negative 1, which is the value there at B, or it's going to be equal to B, which is negative 1, minus A, minus a negative 3. So in other words, it doesn't matter if we subtract B from A or A from B, we're going to get the same length either way. So here's why that's true. If we say negative 3 minus a negative 1, that's just like saying negative 3 plus 1, which we know is a negative 2. So we get the absolute value of negative 2, and we know that that's equal to positive 2. Here, if we say negative 1 minus a negative 3, that's like saying negative 1 plus 3, which we know is positive 2, and the absolute value of positive 2 is still 2, and we get the same answer. And as you can see, if we forget about the formula for a second and we just look at A and B on the number line, we can see to get from negative 3 to negative 1 should take us 2 units, or to get from negative 1 to negative 3 should be 2 units. It doesn't matter which way we go, the distance between the points is still 2 units, and that's what we got using the formula. What if we look for the distance between B and C, in other words, the length of the line segment BC? Well, basically that's going to be B, C, and if we wanted to, we could say the measure of the line segment BC, that would be acceptable notation as well, but we could do that saying the absolute value of negative 1 minus a positive 3, or the absolute value of positive 3 minus a negative 1. We can go either way. So here we'd get negative 1 minus 3 would give us a negative 4, so absolute value of negative 4, which we know is 4. Here we'd get negative 3 minus a negative 1, or negative 3 plus 1, which we know is 4, and so we'd get 4. And we can see to get from B to C, we just count over 4 units, so 1, 2, 3, 4 units, or to get from C to B, 1, 2, 3, 4 units. That's why it doesn't matter which way you go, because when you count from one point to another point, you get the same number of units either way, so the length of the line segment is going to be the same. And we could also find the length of the line segment AC, so we could say AC, and that's going to be equal to, if we just count on the number line here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we're going to get 6, and we could see that by doing the absolute value of negative 3 minus 3, or the absolute value of positive 3 minus negative 3, and either way we would get 6. What about looking at a different kind of example? Sometimes we're given something like this, it's a word problem, where we're told point P is between A and B, PA is equal to 15 and PB is equal to 100, find AB. So something like that, we're going to have to illustrate this problem on a number line and then find the missing value. So it tells us point P is between A and B. So we're going to go ahead and draw points A here, B here, and we know that point P is somewhere in the middle. It doesn't matter where we put it, we just know it's somewhere in the middle. So P is between A and B. PA is equal to 15. So this distance here between P and A we know that that's going to be 15. PB is equal to 100, so we know that this distance here is 100, find AB. 
Well, this just goes back to the segment addition postulate, which tells us that if we know the measure of one section of the line segment, and we know the measure of the other section of the line segment, then we can just add them together to get the total measure of the line segment. So if the distance between A and P is 15, and the distance between P and B is 100, then the distance between A and B is going to be equal to 100 plus 15, or 115. Now keep in mind that with problems like these ones, sometimes you'll be given part of the line segment, like the distance between A and P, and you'll be given the total distance from A to B, and then asked to find this unknown distance between P and B. If that's the case, then you want to just take the total distance of A to B and subtract this piece of it, the distance between A and P, and that'll leave you with the distance between P and B, or the length of the line segment, BP. So there are different ways to go about this depending on exactly which piece of information is unknown. But the general idea here is that segment addition postulate, which just tells us that the length of part of the segment plus the length of the other part of the segment is equal to the total length of the segment. So we know AB here is 115. Let's look at one final example. Example, we've brought some algebra into this problem. We've been given this line here and the points P, Q, and R. We know that the length of the line segment PQ is 2x plus 1 and that the length of the line segment QR is x. We've also been told that PQ, the length of the line segment PQ, is equal to 25 and then we've been asked to find PR. So we've been asked to find the total length of the line segment PR from P to R here. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that PQ is equal to 25, so we can say that this distance here, PQ, is 25. Well, we know that it's also 2x plus 1, so if we just go ahead and set 2x plus 1 equal to 25 and solve for x, then we should be able to use that information to find PR. So subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 2x is equal to 24. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 12. Since we know that x is equal to 12, and that the line segment qr is equal to x, we can say that this length right here is equal to 12. So now we want to find pr, the distance between p and r. By the segment addition postulate, we can just say PR is equal to 25 plus 12, so 25 plus 12, and we get a total value there of 37. So the length of the line segment PR, which we can write PR, or we can write the measure of the line segment PR, either way, is going to be equal to 37.